G'day, fellas, and welcome back to Mega Random Nomad. It is happening. It is happening right now. And we are witnessing the beginnings of a game that uh, may just end up going absolutely chaotic like the last one. If anybody was unfamiliar or missed the last one, well, I'll leave a link in the description to where you can find it. But uh, this is the future of Age of Empires 4. I have uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed the last one that we watched, and we are now about to witness the second one. And we've got a few additions. You may notice them in the bottom right-hand corner of your minimap. Now, in addition to that, we'll reveal the minimap for you. We've also got this new feature. Check this one out right here. This is so you can keep track of uh, of exactly where everybody is. Now, we're not going to be putting that up all the time, uh, but we are indeed going to be, uh, be using it a fair bit. But uh, we'll take a look now because we've already got some early villager movement happening. But let's introduce our players and exactly how are they going to be playing this game out. So first and foremost, we have Wham01, who is going to be playing as the French today. We can see his villagers slowly but steadily moving across the map. We've actually got this one, who is just going to be doing a little bit of fishing. Second villager making his way back. Next up, we've got Paf, who is going to be on the French villagers making his way across the map towards that main town center. Next up, we have got Matis, who is making his way up towards his northern position, or at least. <laughs> oh, 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 Matis. Oh, Matis. Terrible, terrible damage. He has fallen victim to a bitey wolf and so close to his, uh, to a potential person who could have helped him out. Uh, but also, it looks like he's gone for a little bit of, uh, a little bit of a curious decision down here as well. Coming down towards this southern position, looking to dock up. Doesn't seem to be a whole lot of fish. For oh, no, no. There is one. There is a single deep water fish for Matiz. Uh, and he's going to be playing the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, so he's going to be looking very healthy up here with this single villager to his name. Next up, we have got Liquid to Muslim playing on the English. And that is right. This is random. Keep in mind, this is random uh, maps. And Liquid to Muslim got the English, which are quite well known to be his best civilization by far and you can see he's already had a little bit of struggling here with the uh with the wolf and who have we got up next let's take a look we've got david kim who is going to be up next david kim also playing on the french for anybody unfamiliar with david kim it's actually puppy paws or it is it's puppy paw so wham's brother these two guys these are from canada uh and uh, and david kim uh, that is his his username now if you don't know who david kim is uh he was actually a balance tester for starcraft 2 way back in the day uh but uh we did actually cover a video on the channel from or from this this player but we didn't know it was uh it, we didn't realize at the time who it was but uh he's gonna be playing the french and he's gonna be looking i mean we got a lot of action up towards this top but let's keep introducing who we've got else who, who we've got else who else we've got on this side of the map we've got nevix here who's reunited all three of his villages gonna be playing the abbasid dynasty definitely gonna be one of the favorites look at this beautiful position he has found himself in up towards the north gonna be easy to wall himself up keep himself safe and of course did make back his villages all the way to this position very very safely who else are we going to have? We're going to have Snooper across the other side of the map. And you can see Snooper already going to be doing a little bit of that fishing. You can see he's actually managed to find some fish out here. There is some deep water fish. Uh, an interesting pond. Look look at the way that this uh, this water is flowing. Whoa! <laughs> what is up with this water right here? It looks like we've got Jesus standing by. He's just parting the water for everybody just to... to, uh, to get through it, it seems. Uh, that is an interesting spawn, the way that that has happened. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, some very, very nice, interesting water. Now, I don't think... Yeah, this is going to be separate to the pond that is down here from Matiz. So, Matiz just... I, I, poor Matiz. He makes a dock with his villager, goes to explore, doesn't find any fish. Other one dies. You know, if, if Matiz <laughs> ends up winning this game, despite the terrible start that he's had, yeah, impressive stuff, Matiz. Impressive stuff. Because this is a terrible start. And, you know, most people would look at a, a Mega Random and say, oh, you know, I, I want to restart the game or something like that. It's just not possible. It takes so long to load these kind of games. You can see how big the map is. But we haven't even finished introducing all of our players because we've still got our final player up towards the north. It's going to be Dinky King, who is definitely caught between a rock and and a hard place. He's got enemies everywhere. Now, it does look like he has scouted out his enemy Nevix up here, so he's aware, and they will undoubtedly be scheming uh, to uh, to try and stay alive, but uh, I suspect we might have a little bit of trouble in the early game being so close to so many people, but uh, you can see he's made his villagers, or at least made one of the villagers on the way back. Second villager going to be coming up here as well, and I think it's always one of those interesting discussions or d interesting decisions. Uh, do you bother moving back your villager in the early game 
when there is the potential threat of wolves. We saw Matis lose that early villager to a wolf. So are you just better off? Like, if we go take a look at the perspective of Matis right now, you'll see, like, he, he started off his villager over here, began moving it around, came around the forest, ran into a wolf somewhere along here. I think it might have been two wolves because you can actually kill one wolf. But we saw that there was a there were wolves there and obviously couldn't make it back all that way. So should have he just left it there to hunt up the same way that he is leaving this one? But... Um, that are, they are our players, ladies and gentlemen. So put your bets in. Who do you think's going to win? Who do you think's in the best spot to win? If I was going to predict a winner, you know I love corners, right? I'm a big fan of the corner boy. I do like the position of Nevix up here. I feel like this is really good. He's got he's got the double corner. When I say double corner, I mean, you know, he's, he's got one corner here, but he's also uh, got the ability to, to sort of keep himself cornered in over this side as well. And very smartly also put the House of Wisdom at the back of his base. Uh, but undoubtedly, he's going to be looking to try and push out, try and secure up a bit of the map. And it, it's very interesting, you know, the, the way that these guys have all decided to go on this same island. Now, you know, villagers, if we take a look at their perspectives, you know, there, there could have been a town center down here. There could have been a town center down here. Uh, that's Matiz. That's the Muslims. I apologize for the black. Uh, so we, we see David Kim, you know, he's, he started off with villagers. He could have dropped his team, town center over here. And no one's actually dropped it down on this island we can see that path has actually uh got his uh, his villager let's go have a look at path oh god i just missed over him we've got path right here he's just left his villager over here i think that's kind of a wise decision to be honest but it's always tough because you don't really know the layout of the map and we can see here we know the layout of the map so we can be like oh well, why did no one go for this middle island well, i think people naturally just want to stay away from the middle uh you, you know what happens when you're in the middle where you get targeted by, by multiple people but the people but the consequence of that you can see for matt is right now he is surrounded he's got three people to his sound two people to his north so that's six people on a single island and then the other two we've got these two little stragglers so we've got the muslim who i would definitely consider to be in a very prime position here he is a little bit safer he's got a bit more space uh than what what uh, nevix does in the other corner but the other uh, important one to note is that we do have snooper as well which i i, I feel like he's got a lot of space over here people aren't really going to be challenging him for this if you take a look at the crossing so we've got one crossing down towards this position where are the other crossings we've got one crossing there second crossing is up towards this northern position uh, and then so two crossings so far so there's not a lot of ways to get into snooper's base i don't think you can come across here um and then realistically there is where's the next crossing where is the next crossing it's up here so there's three crossings under this giant islands and one of them basically leaves leads to the muslim um so i suspect there's going to be a, a fair bit of action between these two guys early the question is what kind of action these guys are going to see and oh my lord we've all we're already dinky king going for a little bit of a migration uh, going to be moving on to greener pastures it seems i think dicky King realizes yeah oh yeah he realizes he knows so he knows that he's got nevix up here to his north and nevix is going to need space so he's going to be coming for a minute but by the same token towards his south he knows he's got matters and he knows further south he's also got path and then over towards this position uh, position he knows he's got david kim and so he says yeah i'm getting the hell out of there he drops down his landmark over on the other island super smart move here from him now nevix is going to see that you can see the scout for nevix going to be running by actually going to be firing off is that firing off the transport ship with with this ranged attack i didn't realize it could do that that is interesting very very interesting and uh, we can see a scout going to be working on one of dinky king's villages down towards this position and this is the consequence right if you don't go if you don't look to bring that back that villager who knows maybe if the wolves don't get it then the enemy scouts might potentially do that and wham going to be in a difficult or rather dinky king going to be in a difficult spot there but now we've got our age ups coming through the muslim already up to the next stage we can see him down towards this position what have we got here what is david kim doing david kim he uh, I think David Kim, David Kim has spotted out all of the enemies uh, around him. And he, I think he's thought, well, hold on. I reckon we might have a little bit of space over here. But what David Kim doesn't realize is that there is literally an enemy. Who <laughs> went the Abbey of Kings, by the way? The Muslim going the Abbey of Kings, just being an absolute meme in this scenario. Um, this is quite interesting because he's going to be walking straight past the gold mine here of the Muslim. So the Muslim is uh, probably going to be looking to clean up this landmark sooner rather than later. I love the fact that he's just tapping it away with the one uh, villager but i guess one of the things is obviously david has has realized that there's a lot of people around him and there is a very high risk uh, that he might get knocked out and that's going to be your biggest threat in the early game these sorts of 
uh, landmark snipes, they're going to hit you pretty hard. So if you can manage to snipe, or if you can manage to save just one landmark and keep it in the corner, then there is the possibility that you can rebuild. We have seen players look to rebuild. Uh, you guys would have seen, if, if you watched the free-for-all that I played on Mega Random, uh, you know, I, I, I did get knocked out quite early, but I managed to keep myself alive, managed to, to take back the position uh, of one of my enemies, and uh, in, in fact, it was the person who almost knocked me out, and, uh, and then all of a sudden get myself uh, back into a position where I was actually looking at a win. Uh, but at this point in time, David Kim, the only person yet to age up. And we can see the Muslim has well and truly aged up. We'll take a look on board with him and ride along. You can see he's actually going for a castle edge here. So fast castle coming out from him. He's got plenty of villagers here. Uh, but I'm curious. He, he does actually know that Snooper is in this position. Let's check in on Snooper. Does Snooper know that he's there? Indeed he does. So there's going to be battles in the early game. These two guys working each other out. Snooper adding in that second TC, looking to boom it up. For anybody who missed that first game that we, we watched, Snooper actually got the uh, the Chinese in the first roll. This time, Snooper manages to get the Abbasid Dynasty, both two very strong civilizations. Another Abbasid Dynasty up towards the north here, Nevix. If I had to put my money on, on someone that I think is going to win this game, I'm honestly going to go for Snooper. I, I, I do like the fact that he's playing the Abbasid Dynasty. I think he's got the ability to sort of roll over the English. Even though the English are strong, I feel like the Abbasid Dynasty in this environment, just because they've got, they're going to have access to trade, you've got to consider the fact that Snooper's got access to trade. He's got... You know, trade very, very close to him right here. Uh, and there are, the, are other trade posts, I think, down towards this position. I'm not 100% sure where they are. But he's going to have access to trade, and that's going to help him out a huge amount. But uh, let's check in up towards the north, because we've got ourselves a battering ram. I think this might be the first one of the game, the little bit of an attack force moving out towards Dinky King. We're at 11 minutes into this game. Not a lot of, uh, not a lot of battling been happening so far, but uh, something tells me Dinky King's not going to be looking to defend this, because... He's moved. In fact, he went for the Tower of Victory, Dinky King, and adding in a second town center here as well. So he's just jumped across the river, but by the same token, you've got to be a little bit scared for the guy because even though even though we've um even though he's jumped across the river, there's still a battering ram out here. Main town center gonna be going down, mosque gonna be going down, dock gonna be going down, mill's gonna be going down. He's gonna be trying his best. Villagers just coming out here as well, looking to try and take down that battering ram. Doing a pretty decent job of just forcing it back. I don't think he's got enough units. Can't really dive under that town center now. But we'll have a look down on the other side of the map. And just make sure there's no other action. We've got some knights now beginning to build up. Wham! Looking to attack his brother, Puppy Paw. Puppy Paw adding in that second town center. Also going to be going for his own stable. Wham! Probably going to be wondering where that landmark is. Keep in mind, we've got the School of Cavalry coming out for Wham! But the... Uh we got we got a more of an interesting landmark over here, the Chamber of Commerce, and already David Kim. You're gonna be looking to do a bit of trading nice and early. You can see that we spot that there. Yeah, there's there's that second trade post. So I guess Snoop are not really gonna be able to do too much trading there. But look at this. This uh this damage already trying to be coming in. Wham doing a, a decent little job. But now back towards the base of Dinky King. <sighs> Jeez, that, that, that is fun, isn't it? A second ram coming in now. That's going to be very difficult to stop. But we can see the villagers have actually evacuated from this position. All of them going to be heading upstream. The transport ship is empty. Uh, but uh, over on the other side of the river, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff going on here. There is a boar. But keep in mind, the Abbasid Dynasty unable to take that boar. Um, oh, rather, the Delhi. Actually, Dinky's playing the, the Delhi. I just realized he's playing the Delhi, not the Abbasid. Uh, it's Nevix up here who's playing as the the uh, Abbasid. So neither player going to be able to take out that position. But yeah, I, I love that both of the brothers have spawned in playing French. You know, you got David Kim as well as Wham uh, playing French. Two civil, well, obviously one civilization that is not considered to be the strongest in free for all. Would you guys, would you guys be interested in seeing a free for all tier list? A free for all tier list? I think it'd be pretty similar to a late game tier list, but I think there's a lot of other factors to consider because you wouldn't call, you know, like Holy Roman Empire, they're a, they're a good civ in the late game, but I feel like in a free for all, they're just a very good civilization. They've got so much going for them. Like in Matism's position, he's obviously able to get up to the castle age. Uh, one of the big things that happens in free for all is that you're looking to switch out your military and economic units at the same time. So what does that mean? That means deleting all your villages, building up a big military, but then sometimes you want to switch back. And the Holy Roman Empire are going to do that very effectively. And now we see David Kim's actually found a couple of knights. Or, 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 or he's got his knights down onto these villages. A little bit of action is uh, the Muslim going to be repelling that. David Kim probably biting off a bit more than he can chew. He's got a stable. Where is his stable? He must be up here towards the north. Indeed it is. He has found some villagers. Uh, but look at this. He's actually found out Snooper's base. He didn't realize this whole time that the Muslim was sitting right here, lying in wait, ready. And now the Muslim beginning to move out as well. You can see he's heading almost right towards it. I don't think it's going to be too long that David Kim's going to be having that up. And indeed, he gets found out. Now the Muslim turning his attention towards it. Oh, David Kim, you have 
have made a silly, silly mistake, my friend. Gonna be losing that landmark, but, but to be honest, this landmark, you don't really have much to begin with, do you, mate? You get, you get what, 30% of more resources. Like, congratulations, you played yourself. Uh, there's not a lot, but let's check in up towards that northern position because the base of Nevix, or rather of Dinky King, has been completely consumed by Nevix, and now Nevix looks to be jumping across the pond, looking to say day over on the other side of the river. He's got two camel archers as well as some archers getting in this boat. Looks like outposts are going to get up very, very quickly. Snooper also reaches the castle age as well, so Snooper, uh, he is just intent on getting up. You can see he's gone up with the culture wing now, but the attention, majority of the attention turns up, turned up towards this position. De Muslim, he is, uh, he's in a pretty decent spot at this point in time, has gone for the King's Palace as well, uh, but uh, now we can see that Paf uh, looking to try and build up an economy up in uh, up towards this northern island is somewhat remote not the only person who is on this island but at the same time uh, it definitely seems like uh, he's got himself a nice little spot up there so I think he's gonna be a-okay but uh, yeah my main concern up in up for that angle oh that's not good David Kim going quite idle in this position doesn't he's got access to the hunt back here but keep in mind where I'm gonna be uh where I'm gonna be looking to apply pressure path now reaching that third age we'll check and see where the landmark is did he go for a sneaky little landmark over here indeed he did guild hall hiding towards the right hand side of the map uh, but uh, always something to be to be careful of because maybe it makes it a little bit more exposed we see a whole bunch of outposts getting their upgrades in as well arrow slits coming in uh, over towards for da over for David Kim now. Sacred site starting to get taken as well. In fact, that's the Muslim. The Muslim moving out with his monk. He's looking for relics. Uh, he is. He's on the hunt. More attacks coming out. You can see, uh, it's really struggling. But now that battering ram going to be coming in, looking to do some damage over towards this right side here. We're at 16 minutes at the moment. Still, everybody is in, but not everybody has got the same amount of landmarks. We'll check in with the landmark tracker so you guys can see it. You can see Dinky King down to one landmark. That is his last landmark right there. And Nevik seems intent on taking him out, doesn't he? It really seems that way. But Town Center now going to be in a good position to actually deal with this quite effectively. Matt is reaching the Imperial Age, a very early Imperial Age. At this point in time he takes the landmark lead and now got that palace of swabia looking to kick into fourth gear uh with that but two battering rams now beginning to move in we'll continue to watch down towards this position because snooper is starting to move out with his outpost he loves to do this a little bit of an outpost crawl you can see the way that he's doing it he's getting outposts there's no outposts up here but i suspect he's probably gonna be making outposts out the wazoo he's got his third town center down as well his village account is gonna be off the chains indeed he is 85 villagers at the moment scout just looking out moving around on the map spots out a, a, cup, a bit of a base up here towards the north as well so could begin turning his attention up towards the landmarks in this northern position but now it looks like the uh, the battering ram is going to be repelled uh, back towards Dinky King's base we take a look with Dinky King and see how he's doing you can see he's aware of this uh, this town center that once used to exist but he's given it up He's no longer intent. Village is slowly going down. He's repairing up this outpost that does remain here. But Battering Ram going to be looking to take it out. One more strike, and it probably should. But the Battering Ram going to be going down. So Dinky King going to be able to survive at least another day. And Nevix up towards the north. He's invested a lot of resources into this. He has got that second town center out. So we'll be checking in with him. We'll have a look and see how he is doing. He's on 50 villagers. Quite a lot of resources in the bank as well. But you can see he's under attack from that town center. Just firing off on that dock. Just being annoying. But uh, a lot of battles beginning up towards this northern position. And now we can see Nevix actually walling off, taking the base of his enemy and uh, and looking to take control of this northern pocket. And I think this is a great play for him. If he can hold on up here, he's going to be in a great spot to win the game. But now we see Snooper continuing to push over onto De Muslim's base. Now, is De Muslim aware of this? Does he know? Now, obviously he knows that Snoop is here, but he's been spending most of his time most of his attention looking to, to expand up towards this northern spot. We see the sacred site's been taken. A lot of cavalry up here as well, but doesn't seem intent on actually taking out Snooper. At least not at this point. And Snooper's actually got quite a decent mass, and now the Muslim immediately becomes aware of it. David Kim also reaching the castle edge behind this, so we'll check in with him and see how he's doing. Guildhall has gone up in the base, not making the same mistake twice. Obviously, not having the villagers over here to make the same mistake twice either. Uh, but uh, he's going to be happy that he's up in the castle edge because his brother, Wham, who is down below him, he's up in the castle edge and he is well and truly established that. What happened here? The guild hall. Is he, did he hide the guild hall? He hid the guild hall. Indeed, he did. More back towards the base. And now Snooper. Snooper looking to push on the Muslim. We'll take a look from Snooper's perspective because this could, this could be pretty big. When it comes to Demuslim, he's not going to have a lot of luck holding on to this because keep in mind, Snooper has got a pretty decent economy behind this. Demuslim has tried his best to get up to the next or to get up to the next age and build up that economy. But if we take a look on board with him right now, you see he's sitting on 67 villages and he's going to continue bleeding out villages from this. As now Snooper turning his attention towards that wood line 
line, rather. No walls coming up from either of these players, which means the economy is completely open. And keep in mind, the camels in this scenario are going to be very helpful in this situation. So Snooper looking now to uh, to really finish off his opponent. Another outpost going to be coming in. Springwood emplacement's probably going to be coming through with this as well. I wouldn't be surprised if we begin to see it. And Snooper with 2,800 gold get gathered up at this point in time. He wants to grab this entire island for himself. And now we can see Demuslim trying to hold on in this scenario. Action going to be happening out all over on this map. We can see Puppy Paw with Wham fighting it out. And now a Red Palace going to be coming down for Wham. That is not good for Puppy Paw. Oh my lord, that is not good at all. How many villagers is he going to bring out? There's a lot of villagers here. Uh, villagers actually underneath the town center here for for uh, David Kim, or for, for Wham rather. Uh, but now back towards the base. We can see Snooper just going to be looking to engage a great mass of crossbows here. Horseman going to be able to get out on, onto the mass as well. But Snooper definitely looking to find a nice timing here. His plan was definitely from the beginning to, to look to try and take out Demuslim with a bit of a Castle Age Snipes. And he's done very effectively uh, with that. Now Dinky King reaching the Castle Age. Dinky King up towards the north has managed to stabilize, manages to find the Castle Age. But where is that landmark coming for Dinky King? Oh, 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 Dinky King. I like what you've done. You set yourself up a nice little addition over there. We'll have to check in with that shortly because now the Muslim going to begin struggling. Villagers work on that keep. They manage to get it up. We'll take a look back towards the base and indeed Puppy Paw going to be under pressure as Wham begins to put on the on the pressure towards his own base. And now that keep going to be looking to hold in this position but I suspect Trebuchet is going to be coming out and the Muslim actually just taps out. He says good game well played. So there you go. If we were going to be scoring this, I'd have to say that's one point going over to Snooper at this point. He knocks out his nearest opponent. First one of the game going to be tapping out. Now our attention turns back towards this position because David Kim, he is going to be struggling in this position as well. We'll tune on board with Wham and see how he is doing. You can see he's got units all over the map actually taking control of the water. He's got Hulks out here looking to contest his brother on water. How do these two manage to find each other over on water in this position over here? This is ludicrous. That's ludicrous behavior. Did you see that ludicrous display last night? That is ludicrous. Uh, but th these guys are very intent on killing each other. You know, I, I thought normally brothers were meant to stick together, but I tell you what, with a, with a Red Palace that close to him, I think they're going to be doing nothing but driving each other apart. Hulk's managing to make it alive, but I can't believe these two have managed to find each other on the water. I, I guess they were the only two who really looked to go for it. There are other players that looked to go for it. Obviously, we saw Path go for it as well. Uh, we saw Snooper go for it. We even saw Matiz go for it. Sad noises, sad noises for Matiz. At least his villager, actually, yeah, at least his villager keeps on doing her thing down here. But uh, that uh, that red keep, that red palace, it's going to be doing so much work here. You can see it. Look, look at the damage that it does. This is the main town center, by the way. I think it's doing 10 damage a shot, and it fires off like 16 shots. I'm not sure exactly uh, how, how much damage it is, but it's a huge amount. I want to check in back up towards the north, because we can actually see an outpost coming down for Dinky King. Trebuchet is also coming out, shelling across the river. Uh, these two guys intent on taking each other out. Uh, this is an absolute... This is an absolute minefield at this point in time. Uh, there, there are just so many people looking to try and take control. Those those are fishing boats. Okay, I was wondered that they... I was concerned that they might be demo ships. But now Snooper has managed to take control of the entire island for himself. And what we'll do is I'll, I'll bring it up for you guys so that you can take a look at, uh, a little bit closer. We can try and dissect this map uh, for you. Uh, Oh, 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 never mind. We got a Wallalo coming down. It's over towards the right side of the corner, and it looks like Snoop is going to take all of the villages of the Muslim. He says, "Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am." In fact, he's got "Wham" on the other side, but uh, yeah, he says, "Wham, bam, thank you, man." So taking all of those villages uh, for himself. Uh, but uh, we can see that there are attacks all over the map, and now keep continuing to move forward. It's not looking pretty right now for David Kim. He's managed to get double trebuchets out, but there are so many villagers here looking to repair up this keep, looking to continue dropping down more keeps. And now that second landmark going to be uh, going down very shortly. You can see the guild hall sits safely back behind, but the keeps are going to continue moving forward. And I don't, I think Wham might be aware that there is no second landmark other than that that one, because the first landmark was over here. It got taken out earlier in the game by the Muslim, and. Now now, uh, now we've got some trade that is going to be set up. So we talked about this a little bit earlier. The fact that uh, Snooper would have access to trade over here. He's taken out his enemy. Where is that nearest market? That market is nearby. I can smell it. I can sense it. I'm not very good at, at smelling, I'll be honest. There it is. There it is. We did find it. But now continuing to push back. Wham. Going to look to extend out this presence. Extend out this reach. Wham doesn't have a lot of gold, a lot of uh, wood in the bank, so he's not going to be able to to uh, repair this up. So he does have insufficient wood. More attacks coming into his base. David Kim trying as hard as he can, but Wham knows how important it is to take out this nearest player to him, secure himself up a little bit more land. But up towards the north, Snooper now reaching Imperial. Snooper looking very, very good in this game right now. I got to be honest with you guys. The longer this game goes, I think the more likely Snooper is going to win. Actually, Drongo, that 
I don't, I don't know how that, that statement works. I, I just like Snooper's position. I think Snooper is, is, is very, very strong in this position. Now, another keep going to be coming up. But uh, there are so many trebuchets here for Wham. Actually, are the villagers just looking to siege? What are the villagers doing right now? Villagers going to continue to move out. That red palace is going to be going down. So well, David Kim actually going to be taking down all of the forward keeps in this scenario, doing a good job of holding on. Keep in mind, this whole time he's been harassing the economy of his brother down towards the south and preventing all of those resources from being gathered up. All, all that wood that he needed to repair that has all been prevented from being taken in because of those knights and now david kim gonna turn his attention all of a sudden to his brother so a little bit of brotherly love finally uh i, I guess in this scenario you, you know you, typically you would have favored wham to be able to take it off his of his brother but i guess the uh i guess the red palace wasn't aggressive enough path also reaching the imperial age someone that we haven't really talked much about yet we take a look at the the map and have a look how much of the map paths actually got it's it doesn't seem like it, it's there's a lot in the middle but up towards that top right hand corner over towards here there's actually plenty and he's even gone for a red palace himself so he's looking to call australia home over towards this <laughs> this this eastern position but now back down towards the south wham continuing to struggle here with his brother david kim gonna be looking to cause havoc in the base here another keep gonna be going up and then could potentially be looking to, to take his brother out there are going to be trebuchets moving across the map indeed they are he's just got to be careful not to lose them we've got paf with a couple of knights standing by looking to uh looking to prevent any sort of run buyers from coming through on his side just scouting out and now we can see that guild hall really starting to stack up at matthews matthews i feel like he's the quiet achiever at this point in time all of his enemies all of his enemies have been fighting non-stop i feel like we're watching a civ game and look at this dinky king actually looking to strike on his enemy dinky king actually coming out of the woodworks up towards the north here he's got his he's got the oh my lord we almost got taken out by the trebuchets he's got elephants in this position these guys do a huge amount of siege you can see them there a hundred tusk siege damage gonna be begin working on that town center he's already taken out that uh, house of wisdom down to almost or more than half health but now battles unfolding everywhere and now wham going to be potentially getting taken out we can see that first town center going to be coming out for him and he's got a lot of units in his base david kim and wham could potentially be tying <laughs> we could be uh, diving out in this scenario we've already lost one player the muslim he did tap out quite early snoopers push came in very very strongly but now we've got players that across the map that might actually be looking to, to be dropped out as well we can probably ride on board with paf i think he's going to be pretty safe or even matt is yeah matt is look at matt is matt is so happy right now these two guys up towards the north they're intent on killing each other these two guys towards the south they're intent on killing each other it's just him and paf and, pa and paf is just migrating he's just he's very happy over here so by the same token i feel like maybe even matt is in a pretty decent spot in this scenario because all all is quiet over on this front he's got 134 villages he is going for the big leagues main town center gonna be coming down here dinky king gonna be looking to actually strike nevix back so just when remember in the early game Nevix actually forced Dinky King to leave. He said, get off my island. And indeed he did. He migrated over to the other island, Dinky King did. But now Dinky King has somewhat built up a pretty strong force, a pretty good reputation, I'd almost say. And uh, now looks to strike back. And indeed, the Empire does strike back. As we see that first town center going to be going down. Villagers coming in here looking to get in on the sieging action as well. And keep in mind, Nevix is playing the Abbasid Dynasty. So if he loses these two landmarks, that is it. There is no coming back from that. Last landmark for Wham is remaining over towards this eastern flank. And you can see that uh, David Kim just working through all of the forces here. We can ride on board with Wham for a little bit, but I suspect we're going to have our next player coming out very, very shortly as Dinky King manages to get a decent comeback in this position. Nevix obviously not respecting the fact that Dinky King, while being forced off this, uh, this northern island, came back with a vengeance. And indeed he did. A lot of tower elephants uh, managing to actually even up the score. And you can see now crossbowmen going to be coming out. Villagers going to be making their way in. But I don't know if these villagers are going to be able to make it in time. He just uh, he just surrenders. He says, you know what? I, I can't. I can't do it. I want to see how much, how many resources did he have in the bank? He had 870 wood. It wouldn't have lasted very long. There was no real way that he could deal with it. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Our second player is knocked out. Uh, Wham01 has surrendered as well. Wham also going down. He does have that landmark behind his base. So two players being taken out within a minute of each other. And you can see, you can see David Kim intent. So this is Puppy Paw, by the way. Puppy Paw intent on taking out his brother. And indeed, brotherly love doesn't seem as, uh, as, as as heartfelt as it should be uh but uh, that that final landmark gonna be going down look at the villagers in here 58 villagers up towards this position he brought them all up he rallied them all up into this area you could wallow all these you could take away all of these villagers we take a look at dinky king right now he's sitting on 111 villagers he could quite honestly he could take all of those villagers i wouldn't be surprised is he working he's he's got a relic here he could actually get he could get a scholar if he picks up is he doing it i think he's doing it relic gonna get picked up 
He's going to rally it over to the transport ship. I think he's doing it. I think he might be doing it. Indeed he is. He's going for it. We, you know you got to watch this. We, you know we got to watch this. This is, this is the stuff right here. All right, he's going to head over. We're going to put on cinematic mode. It's going to look a little bit weird because of the way I'm using the magnifying glass over on that map there for you guys. You can see it looks a little bit funny uh, right now. Uh, but uh, I, I apologize because uh, essentially what we're doing is just magnifying that screen. And now looking to come in on this angle, looking to do a big wall of lol, looking to take control of all the villagers. You can see him trying to get it in there nice and close. He's going to say, yoink, those are my villagers. This is the prospects. Uh, well, this is the consequence of, of tapping out in this scenario. And all those villagers go over. There were actually more villagers coming in as well. He has captured a huge amount of villagers in this scenario. And now going to be sitting safely 155 villagers for Dinky. That is one happy camper. So he has managed to claw himself back. He, he, he was going down in the early stages. We saw him lose his town center. We saw him lose that early, uh, that early base, but he moved. He took himself over to that next island, dropped down the Tower of Victory. But even the Tower of Victory ended up going down. The only way he kept himself alive was actually by dropping down the House of Learning a little bit further away. So I don't know how he managed to get over here. Maybe he just did a bit of a walk around the mountain all the way down to the south, but he's found a pretty good spot up here. And now players begin to move out, begin to separate. So up towards this northern spot, we've We've got Paf, who just who just chills out. Doesn't really seem to be doing too much of anything at the moment. And now up towards the north, obviously we've got Dinky, who's up here. He's quite happy. And all of a sudden, Matt is. I mean, Matt is just Matt is doing holy Roman Empire things. You can see the infrastructure. I got to have a look. How much production does Matt is have right now? Twenty eight. And you could see so much resources. So much. So many resources in the bank. Zero gold a minute though for Matt is. Does Matt is Matt has got no relics. Matis has no relics and now moving up towards the north. Matis has found a relic though. Look at that. I think this might have been... Was this the one from Dinky? I think this was Dinky's relic. I think this was Dinky's relic. And he must have like accidentally right clicked on it to come back to base or something and just not realize that what he had done was, was issue a command to come down here and all the hand cannons have picked it up. But then down towards the south, obviously David Kim has managed to clean up his brother. Uh, David Kim is in the fourth age. And now we hear attacks coming out. Oh no, it's the Rabaldequin. Oh no, not the Rabaldequin. You guys you guys know how I feel about these units. These these units, these guys mean business. Uh, these guys mean serious business. But now down towards the south, another attack going to be happening against Snooper. Oh my, oh my lord. Look at the minimap. Can we just admire what is going on right now on the minimap? Look at the coverage that Snooper has got. Oh my god, you guys are going to see this. Look at what Snooper is beginning to unfold down here towards this southern position. He is looking to take control of the entire south island this is huge this is massive and now gonna be stonewalling it up as well up towards the north this other area look have a look at this mini map right now i just want you guys to appreciate i'll, I'll sit here us here in a blank spot so i mean I, I can draw it here with my with my cursor for you guys so he's got his trade going in right here one entrance two entrance three entrance down here so he's going to just look and if we if we take a look down on this position here you can see he's actually dropping down outposts on the edge here he's just going to be looking oh my look at the bombard cannons or the cannon emplacements that are coming in he is looking to really solidify his position in the late game i think we might have a, our, our first potential wonder player over here it's going to be so difficult for anyone to try and stop a wonder coming out from snooper he's got so many good places that he can put it as well he could actually hide it up in his enemies uh, up in uh, up in this base here from the muslim I don't know if that would really serve any purpose. Maybe it just makes it a bit harder. Maybe back here, like over on the berries. This is a nice little defensive spot as well. I don't think you can get through there. Maybe you can chop through there. You always got to be careful of like potential chop throughs or something. Actually, actually, this is a decent spot as well. So maybe go for it right here. But then the issue that you've got is if you do go for a wonder here, that there, there is the potential for a back door. You, your enemy could look to chop through here. Actually, it looks pretty secure. I don't, I don't think... Oh, I say that. I say that. It looks pretty secure. Actually, no. Th th there's no way that you're coming through here. There's no way that comes through here. I think the, be the best chance that they've got is like diving through up on the... Oh, my Lord. On the mountains. There is one way through to go from here. Uh, but you... It would take a big brain to actually realize that. The fact that, okay, I've got to land. I've got to then battle Snooper. And then I've got to dig through here and then come up 
in this position. I don't think you're going to be able to get past there. I think you would need to transport ship in on the back, and then you could potentially take out that um, that position as well, because he can just chop through that, and he can put the um, the wonder there. And he'd be thinking about it right now. You can see he drops down the mill as well, or the uh, the lumber camp. So he's he's intent on cutting that down. I reckon that might be a pretty decent spot. The other spot is, is going to be up on these berries and just leave all these forests up as natural defense. But you are kind of open up from the north. And in fact, maybe even trebuchets could reach you up from over here. Uh, and you don't really have a lot of control, but look at Snooper. Now, one of the things to note, now you guys might be wondering, why is Path not killing uh, Matt is, why is he not killing David Kim? So typically the way it works in this scenario is players look to go for those with the highest score. So if you've got the highest score, they will come for you. And there's a couple of advantages and disadvantages to doing that. Because number one is if you do do that, then you're going to you're gonna be going for the guy with the most resources. So it makes sense, right? But just remember, you don't always have your resources uh, available to you reflected in your score. So as an example, David Kim, uh, he has got right now the guild hall uh, that he is relying on to be getting in a large source of gold. Now, this doesn't actually count towards his score. So a French player typically uh, could hide a huge amount of score in that and not really uh, tell you about it. But now we've got ourselves a little bit of a fight beginning to unfold. Half up towards this northern position, going to be getting pushed out. You can see the Snooper intent on, on cleaning this out. I think we might avoid going into this uh, in, into this uh, individual perspective just because in this scenario, it starts to lag a little bit. I'm not sure if you guys are seeing that, but I definitely am. But we're down to five at this point in time. And now the next battle becomes uh, very evident. So Snooper, I'm curious what... What, he's only got 23 military units at this point. He's pushing up towards the north. A lot of battering rams in this scenario, but Path yet to do too much damage to it to clean up. You've got crossbows coming out as well from Snooper, but look at the upgrades that are coming in from Snooper. He is intently, he is very intently. Oh my lord, look at the upgrades. Boom, 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 boom. Oh my lord. We gotta get it. Well, you know, we gotta get a photo of this one right here. This is just some, this, this right here. This is free-for-all, baby. This is what you love to see. Free-for-all right there. That is just, you know, good luck getting across there, mate. Good luck getting across there. Uh, but uh, keep in mind, he is doing trading. Let's check in with the traders and see how they're doing. 195 gold and then 37 stone. Now, keep in mind, the Abbasid Dynasty got a whole bunch of options for their traders, uh, one of which we cannot see uh, just because he's already researched them. But it includes bringing back uh, a percentage of resources from your gold. Uh, so it's in a secondary source. Uh, they've also got one that increases the armor that you've got. I think it's the fire armor. Uh, so yeah, you can see the trader here's got eight armor. So that's quite a lot of armor. So I think it just gives it five armor uh, against units. Uh, but in addition to that, you've also got uh, another upgrade that gives it, I think it's plus 25%. Um, but Crossbowman still yet to get their upgrade. We can see Snooper trying his best. He's actually got elite camel riders in queue. Manages to take out all of the uh, all of the knights from his enemy. But now the Crossbowman going to be looking to tee off towards his enemy. I wouldn't be surprised if we actually start to see uh, players look to form an alliance and look to try and take out Snooper together. But now we can see a battle unfolding, so it looks like we've got a little bit of a a little bit of a close quarters fight out here. Matt is going to be coming through, trying to do a bit of damage. He's heading down south. I'm not sure exactly. He, he, you can see the way he's ignoring his enemy in this position, so I'm not sure exactly what the intent is in this scenario. And you got to say, like, how beautiful is the Holy Roman Empire in purple? It is just, look, the purple and the gold just go so well together. I don't think I've ever seen a more beautiful army. We'll take a look at it now. Look at that. Look at that. That is just absolutely prime stuff. Gotta say, I gotta say I love it. But now back towards the base of Snooper. More research coming in. We just saw him get Court Architects, which increases the health on his buildings. He is very intent on holding these positions. You can see the way that the upgrades are coming through now. I wouldn't be surprised if he actually starts looking to trade in some stone. Indeed, he can still actually buy stone at this point in time, and I'm kind of surprised that he's not doing it. He's definitely in, in need of it. He's still got access to a lot of stone out here as well, uh, but uh, he is definitely shaping up to be the favorite at this point. He's 5,000 points ahead of the next guy. Uh, and that is uh, that is largely because of all that infrastructure that he's got. But now battering rams up towards the north doing a great job. Snooper going to continue rallying them in. Just a handful of crossbows in this position. Still yet to get the elite crossbow upgrade for Snooper. We'll take a look at the base of Dinky King and see... Oh my lord, Dinky King. You got yourself some infrastructure over here, son, don't you? Just a classic, just a, just a standard 57 pieces of infrastructure right here. Don't, don't mind me, guys. 57... Look at that, 15 archery ranges, 21 barracks at this point, six, seven siege workshops, six stables, and a single dock. 
Also the Palace of the Sultan. Uh, but uh, it looks like now up towards this north, Path is getting pushed out slowly uh, by Snooper. All of the elite crossbowmen, or rather just the, the Castle Age crossbowmen, are going to get taken out. But Snooper is intent on looking to try and control this area. Just I think he's... I wouldn't be surprised. Snooper's the kind of guy, he's probably looking to push out even further. And just like, because ideally what he wants to do in this scenario is make sure that it, it's going to take as long as possible for his enemy to actually take control of the of the area. So you can see if he, if he manages to wall this up and put outposts all behind it, then it means that his enemy's going to have to walk all the way through it before he gets to this, uh, this area here. And as a result, you know, it, it's going to be very difficult uh, for, for them to, to do it. It's going to delay them. Because if he wants to go for that wonder victory, we'll take a look and see if anyone's gone for a wonder just yet. No one's gone for the wonder just yet. Uh, so uh, we can take a look at the sacred site tracker. You can see the path has managed to capture up one sacred site. I'm not sure where the other sacred sites are. Uh, we'll, we'll close that one for now. Uh, I see one in the middle. Oh, there's the second one. And third one up towards the north. Uh, so I think that's it. I think there's three sacred sites. I could be wrong. You know what we can do? You know what we can do, guys? We can have a look here. So I can see one, two, three sacred sites. I think that's it. I can't see any more. So we'll, we'll call that it. Now I'll take you back over to the base of David Kim. We'll check in with him as that red palace stands very strong and protective. But you can see these players have walled themselves off from each other. They are intent on just keeping themselves at arm's distance. Uh, up towards the north, I think Matt is going to be very happy uh, that the, the fight up here did stop. You can see a couple of battering rams did actually make their way up towards this position. I, I suspect he's just looked to, to take out the town centers. Uh, I, I don't even know who, whose farms these are. I would assume that they belonged uh, to Nevix because they are Abbasid. You can see the flag on them there. I'm pretty confident that's a... Yeah, I think that's got to be the way it is. Yeah, that is totally the way that it is. Uh, if we check on this town center here. Yeah, okay, Delhi. Uh, but you can't see that, but you can see... Yeah, we can see the farms do have an allegiance. Uh, but now uh, we've got ourselves a little bit of a wall up in the middle of the map. So players looking to just begin building towards that late game. Uh, everybody's in age four at the moment. You can see that uh, over on the, uh, the right-hand side of the screen. And at this point, I mean, Matt, Matt is looking pretty good. But I guess at this point, I want to ask you guys uh, a couple of questions. So... Would you be interested in seeing a tournament for this kind of stuff? Would you like to see players put up against each other? And I'm, I'm not just talking anybody. I'm talking like pros. I'm, I'm thinking like we get some pros on board. Would you guys be interested in seeing a tournament between top level players? So that's going to mean like most of the people that are in this game probably are, are going to be in it. I'm guessing about 32. Destroyed Paf's landmark. Paf's landmark going up down up towards the north. Indeed, it was Trebuchet down here. So uh, Dinky King looking to try and take further control of this island, looking to just solidify his position as well. And now Elephant's going to be moving out. These guys look pretty damn awesome. I got to say, can, can I just be honest with you guys? I, I, I love the different colors in this game. I, I love blue. I love red. But, oh, man, how good does green look? Look at this green army. There's so much green on it. So I just feel like I'm I'm, I'm sitting in a in a forest full of green. And at the same time, purple. I mean, we saw how, earlier how, how good that Holy Roman Empire army looked. But then pink as well. I mean, if, if, you're, if, if you're a pink enjoyer, then by all means, pink looks pretty damn cool as well. So there's so many sick colors out here. The yellow as well, another one of them. It's just like, I can't wait to be able to pick my own color. I really, really can't. Can't wait. Don't even get me started on teal. Oh my lord, dude. When teal comes in, oh damn, dude. That is that is where it gets exciting. Uh, but uh, hopefully we get that option. And ideally, I'd like to see like a preference as well. Like you just have two preferences, like color preference, like preference one, preference two, at least for, for like matching up with people. That way it's like, okay, my favorite color is orange, but my second favorite is green. And so maybe they're like, my favorite co color is orange and my second favorite color is purple. And so if, if you get up against this person, then it just gives you both your secondary or something like that. Like, you know, or maybe it just gives gives the, the first color to a random person and then the second person gets their secondary color. That way you're not awarded with like a a shitty color like blue or red damn those colors uh but yeah I i'm curious what you guys would like to see whether you'd like to see a, a tournament of this style because i i do start to feel like th this is something that could really begin to build uh especially when it comes to exciting things like this i, I genuinely like the way i'm watching snooper play this i i know he's going for a wonder and i don't even know like i don't see oh my god oh my god snooper how 68 production buildings, 27 stables, 27 archery ranges, a dock, 10 siege workshops, and two barracks. Two barracks? Two barracks? 
Outpost now up on the uh, the shoreline. You can see he's basically dropping down an outpost every two inches. Uh, he's got so many resources in the bank at this point in time. Ideally, you just look to send out as many villagers as possible, but you can hear the bombard cannons firing off on them. This one down towards the south. Oh my lord. Oh, Mattis is still down here. Where's Mattis' villager? Did Mattis get walled in? No, we can see Snooper did come out. I don't know where Mat Mattis has a villager down here. Did it get taken out? I'm not sure if it got taken out, but speaking of getting taken out up towards the north, Pap getting taken out right now by Snooper. Snooper just doing a great job despite having such a small military. He's only got 34 military, but still, he manages to find Pap's proxy. I, I would call this maybe a proxy. No, it's probably a secondary base. It's, a, it's more of a second base, isn't it? Not really a proxy. Uh, but yeah, attacks happening all over the map, it seems, right now. Snooper, in particular, just beginning to continue exerting his presence in the middle here. Pap also going to be going for this. I love the way that Pap is playing this. Like, he's he's got himself up against the river. He is... There, there is the potential threat that Pap could be killed at any moment. I genuinely feel like anyone could just walk into Pap's base and be like, School of Cavalry, dead. Town Center, dead. Because keep in mind, Pap made his extra landmarks over here. We, we saw the Guildhall come up over here, and we also saw the Red Palace. So he's only got two landmarks. So this could be terrible for him in the late game. I feel like we're, he's almost being kept alive at this point, just to just so people can use his population or his supply. Like, yeah, uh, we're going to need you to uh, to attend uh, the, this military uh, exercise over here, Pap. Do you mind going over there, Pap? I can see he's got a couple of sheep up towards on this cliff line. Going to be going down at the same time Matt is looking to explore up here. Not going to be successful. It is walled in. But now down towards the south, attacks continuing. That outpost is going to be doing its best. And man, when I watch this, honestly, I just want to play. I just want to play. And now we see David Kim, aka Puppy Paw, looking to build up a huge mass of, uh, of infrastructure himself. 48 military production buildings now. And this is one of the things, when you get to the late game, this is what you've got to be doing. You've got to make sure you've got a lot of production. Now, where is that guild hall? Where is that guild hall? I want to check it. I want to find it. I want to touch it. Where's that guild hall? I know it's around here somewhere. I think it's in the middle of his base, right? No, up here. Up here. Yeah, here it is. Okay, not bad. 8,000 gold in the bank. And the thing is, he doesn't need to take it out. It's only if he ever gets into a fight, like with Pap, or whether Matiz looks to come for him. And then he just takes out that gold and then immediately starts training units. Uh, and keep in mind, he's playing French, which you've got this beautiful bonus in the late game. Uh, you can't see it right now, but uh, I'll do my best to try and show it to you. Uh, so this building here, yeah, that is that is in... They are all in range. Uh, so it's going to be reducing the cost of units down. Destroy Snooper's Wonder. There you guys go. Snooper has built a wonder. He's got his trade up towards the north. Actually, if we take a look at the perspective from David Kim. There it is. There it is. We have got the wonder. The wonder has been constructed. Ladies and gentlemen, get your timers out. We'll have a look now. The wonder tracker is up. 14 minutes and 43 seconds. So Snooper feels like he is in a position right now to take out his enemy. You can see the crossings on the minimap as well. Uh, the, the, the way that they're up here. Uh, there's one up towards the north. One in the middle. And then one down towards the south. That is it. So players now going to begin mobilizing towards Snooper's base. The wonder has been constructed. It is time. It is time. It is time. Where is Paf? That is the question. What does Paf look to do in this scenario? I feel like Paf right now... I, Paf is actually a very high-rated player. If, if I was to be honest with you guys, I think he's in the top 70, the top 60. But I feel like at the moment he's dr really drawn the short straw because he's just between like the, everybody that's dominant. And like pe people were just like kind of just keeping him on the edge there like hey path hey path but you can see the the forces of his enemy beginning to move in it's quite serious now bombard here looking to siege down path uh, now keep in mind if path's only got those two landmarks first landmark the town center second landmark school of cavalry so this could be it for him Matiz is coming in from the 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 north and towards the west he's obviously got puppy paw but yet to be taken out let's take a look with dinky though i'm curious to see what dinky is up to it's been a while since we've seen him and indeed dinky He's moving out. Now, remember another thing as well. Uh, just because you have got land entrances doesn't mean your enemy will come through those. Your enemy may look to do... Yeah, yeah, something like that. It's good to see that Snooper is aware of the potential threat that his enemy has with regard to dropping. And now we hear sacred sites being taken as well up towards the north. A couple of scholars, indeed, they're just going to be moving off that sacred site almost immediately. Uh, but now the elephant numbers, the elephants have gone marching, it seems. Dinky King uh, going to be looking to apply pressure up towards this northern position. Could be coming in. There are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of outposts up towards this area. Uh, but uh, I really wouldn't be surprised if, if Dinky gets through there's a lot of forces up here and now dinky also bringing up the scholars uh looking to repair in this scenario we take a look and see what his military numbers are at he's at 69 military at the moment i got no co-caster guys so i gotta say it you know i gotta say it right i can't just not say it nice
Nice, Dinky King, nice. Uh, but uh, players now mobilizing across the entire map looking to try and take out Snooper. And this is really where it comes to free for all. And this is something I'm a big fan of. Just because you're next to a person and just because you can attack their base doesn't necessarily mean you have to attack their base. You know, in this position, I definitely think with an army like this, Matis probably could have rolled over uh, Path at this point in time. But at the same time, he knows he needs Path to help him. He knows he needs Path to, to look to potentially take out Snooper. And uh, I guess the question for me is, where's Path's army right now? Because he's... Oh my lord, Path! Where you at, dog? You gotta get yourself some gold, son! And now we hear those bombards continuing to go up. A couple of culverins up here towards the north as well for Snooper. Snooper actually looking to get out. Oh, Snooper, don't do him dirty like that. Snooper, he's pushed up all this time. He's taken so long to get out here. And now you're just going to push out with culverins. Culverins now looking to unfold. You can see the elephants have moved immediately into this position. They're like, hey, you get back. You get back away from my 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 all-important trebuchets. But now back towards the base. Oh, no. Oh, no. Path going to get taken out here. What's happening? No, don't do Path like this. He's just he's just trying to, he's trying to get ahead in life and and now matt is going to be coming in and looking to, to clean him up is this the end of path is this is this the guy who, who got the unfortunate spawn of being in the middle of the map and now at the same time he's also oh he's got some carracks out carracks going to be looking to defend on this position but we see bombards as well as traps but this is the thing right this is what snooper wants keep that in mind this is exactly what snooper wants because snooper he's got a landmark or rather a wonder and he's going to be able to... He, he wants his enemies to be fighting amongst each other. He, he wants, you know, he wants Dinky King to be fighting with matches. He wants Puppy Paul to be fighting. But now we can see down towards the south, but we've got ourselves a... Oh my lord, Dinky King working, or rather uh, David Kim working through this very, very quickly. We can see that there's still a, oh my lord, there is a long way for him to go. Look how much land actually has to be covered to get to Snooper's Wonder. To get all the way to Snooper's Wonder, you've got to go, th oh my lord, I feel like I've gone across six dry Arabias at this point in time. That was a quite a long way through, but now Camel's coming out, Camel's looking to connect and up with these trebuchets up towards the north. Snooper going to be intent on holding this position and the Australian sensation uh, looking to try and force out that enemy. Now, remember, Snooper has got multiple enemies at multiple fronts. He hasn't built a gate up on this this front one here. Uh, still yet to get all the upgrades on these as well. You can see he's got bombards that are still yet to be placed in these. Uh, but down towards the south is going to be where most of his attention is drawn. Honestly, I would be tempted to just give up this position in in this scenario. Or just like, just spam out a whole bunch of outposts. Just go non-stop. We have a look at Snooper's perspective. He's on 8,000 8, wood. It, do, it doesn't seem, or it seems like a lot, but I promised you it's not. Enemy destroyed Paf's landmark. No, Paf, not like this. Paf, going to be going down shortly. You can see he's got one more landmark that remains, and I think Matiz knows where it is. Does he turn his attention towards it? We can see the Carrix over on towards this right-hand side. Going to be looking to take it out. Now, enemy captured Sacred Site as well. That's not of too much importance. We can see there's a second Sacred Site here in the middle as well. But now, these traps looking to do some damage on this uh, on this keep. This keep going to be going down, and slowly but steadily he does it. But we'll take a look now with the Wonder Tracker and see how we're doing. Nine minutes for Snooper's victory. Nine minutes for Snooper's victory at this point in time. Carrick's all going to be going down, and I think Path might be going down with them. Uh, that is very unfortunate for Path. He continues to get rolled over. We can see Matt is unfortunately very intent on taking out his pink brother who spawned just below him. But now, I mean, uh, at this point in time, David Kim's done a pretty decent job as well. So much infrastructure coming out here. Very defensive. And remember, it is all about, you know, if, if you've got a wonder, then all of a sudden, attention turns towards you. Attention turns towards you because you are now the threat. You've got a win condition. And as a result, we see down towards the south, we've got David Kim pushing in upon Snooper up to towards the north. We can see the same thing coming in and now we've got Dinky King looking to try and rebuild this siege mass. He's struggling. He doesn't have a lot of land up towards this northern position. He's got the stone out cropping up here, but there's really not much. So a really smart move uh, coming out here from Snooper to be looking to, to fortify this area. I would have loved to have even seen fortifications up here because then once you deny the trebs, that's it. Your enemy's got to rebuild those trebs and march them all the way to the front. And it looks like Path... It looks like Path has been saved. It looks like Path has just been... Has Paf been, has, he has been led to live another day. He has been allowed, he's been permitted. The gods of grace, Paf it seems, as Matthias turns around with his huge army at this point in time. But why? What has transpired that Paf gets to live, that Paf gets to survive? We'll take a look from Paf's perspective. You can see he's really struggling right now to make ends meet. He's got just 31 villagers, 11 military, a handful of resources in the bank. Paf now just getting wheelbarrow. Paf never had wheelbarrow all this time. Poor Paf. We're at 53 minutes, Paf. You should have had wheelbarrow a while ago, my friend. Oh, you hate to see it. You really do. 
up towards the north, this island is somewhat barren uh, now, but it seems the Dinky King has looked to take control of this area. Uh, so we did see him indeed slowly but steadily roll over this position. And uh, he's going to manage to be doing a quite a good job. Path, once again, going to be looking to take out some of these forces. Path, did you not realize that your enemy w w was very patient, very kind to you? And Path actually going for copulation i don't even think i've ever seen the name of this this come through copulation it is the tier three uh research for mining uh, but now continuing to move out towards snooper's base it is going to be matthew's matthew's intent on looking to take down his opponent at the same time quite a push beginning to come through from david kim you can see david kim has pushed well and truly through this large mass he's managed to find his way and indeed now going to be looking to turn his attention towards the base of his opponent a lot of units coming out here and uh, at the same time up towards the north the, the front gates have fallen and the trebuchets continue to unfold snooper might have uh, might have gone a little bit too early might have gone a little bit too early. I don't know. We, we got... we got a, There's a lot of outposts up for Snooper at this... Oh, my... Oh, my God. There is a lot of outposts for Snooper right now. How many outposts has he got? Let's take a look from Snooper's perspective. Snooper has got 107 outposts right now. And 25 farms, by the way. How many mills? Three mills. Three mills. 25 farms and 109 outposts. Snooper currently sits on 85 villages. You could almost say, you could almost argue that might be a bit too much. He, he does have trade, obviously, going back and forth. That's going to be helping him out a huge amount with that stone income. You can see it still coming in. Uh, but at this point in time, I mean, you've you got to be concerned for Snooper. The forces of, of David Kim continue to move in down towards the south. Now, we talked about it. You could you can go through the front, uh, the prayer hall of Ukba, but there is a lot of distance to cover here. But if you are smart, if you are tricky, if you know that there's a back door, then potentially... You could look to enter it. And that is something that always gets scary. And look at the walls coming in from Snooper. I think Snooper actually realizes that there is a way through on this front. Oh my lord. What is that? We've got a, we've got the second coming of Christ right here on this map. That is going to be another one that is kept up in a, a bit of a, a strange spot. Wall not going to be successful. You can see the villagers getting shelled in this position as well. Culverin out here. Bombards. Mangonel's out here as well. Hand Cannon is going to be looking to get in some damage as well as the Culverin. Look to try and take down those elite spearmen doing a great job there. Uh, but up towards the north, continuing to struggle as the Siege of Snooper begins. And indeed, now towards the front, we can see Matthias is looking to open up a bit of a hole. He is slowly but steadily shelling down the entire base and Snooper. I mean, we'll head into his perspective. I want to see exactly what's going on right now because he is aware of all the potential positions that his enemy might be in. He's got a trade ship that's just chilling out here right now. It was looking to try and trade towards this dock. Not going to be successful, though. And now we can see Reboldequin. Reboldequin doing a little bit of scouting. He says, well, hold on. If there's a... Snooper's chopped through. Snooper has chopped through himself. So he didn't actually leave this position. So th there is the potential that his enemy could come through, look to drop a dock down, and drop on this prayer hall of Ukba right at the back. Because look, there's nothing here protecting it. There are no outposts. There are no keep. There's no boiling oil. And these berries still yet to be taken. So it means that you can't build in this position. So there's really nothing protecting this prayer hall of Ukba from, you know, a potential back door. So that is going to be an opening. Uh, but up towards the north, Dinky King going to be intent on coming across. We'll check in with the Wonder Tracker right now. Four minutes to go right now. Snooper is looking to hold on. He's now pushing in from the north side. You can see he's starting to struggle here. But uh, going to be able to push back David Kim towards the middle. You can see the Siege of Snooper is well and truly underway at this point in time. All of the uh, all of the outposts going to be going down. You can see the, um, the, the Bombard's just doing so much work and up towards the north. We've got units being deleted now for Snooper. Snooper is starting to invest more heavily in his economy. 40 elite Camel Archers coming out. Trebuchets in position. Dinky King's going to be able to come from the north and keep that in mind. I mean, the Prayer Hall of Ukba, it is right here. So now we see Snooper looking to wall up. You can see more units being rallied up towards the north. He's deleted everything. Uh, still somewhat open, though. That is the thing to note. He's, he's got this. This is definitely going to keep him safe. I don't think the trebuchets are going to be able to make it through. But if they get through here, that is definitely going to be it. And the elephants are so damn close right now for Snooper. Oh, Snooper, you got to be careful, my friend. The siege of Snooper is un underway right now. And all of a sudden, the, uh, the the bombards in the middle of the map are going to be continuing to push in. Where is David Kim? And what is David Kim up to? Because David Kim, uh, we saw that push come through earlier from him. It was good. But now villagers being pulled in this position. They're going to be A-OK. -okay, and it all comes down to what happens with this with this position. Oh, my Lord! There's an outpost that's come up right now. How did he get behind here? we got to go on board with David Kim. David Kim... He knows. He knows. David Kim knows. David Kim knows. How much longer do we have on this bad boy? We've got less than three minutes to go right now. David Kim 
He's going for a horseman snipe. Battering ram's going to be coming in as well. I don't, I don't think you're going to be able to get through here. I think you might actually need... Oh, actually, that is shallow water. There is the potential that he just walks straight into here. I don't I don't think that... I don't think Snooper knows. I'm 99%... Snooper doesn't know. Snooper doesn't know. All that Snooper is focused on right now is this push up towards the north. Oh my lord, the siege of Snooper is unfolding right now. At the same time, we've got more hand cannons moving in from the, the left side, but good luck to him because that is a lot of outposts coming through now. And now back towards that front we can see Snooper really starting to struggle. The elephant's just doing so much work, but it's all about taking out these trebs. If you can take down the trebuchets, then you can take this game right on board with Matt here because he's going to be one of our, our individuals who are independent from this scenario. And now continuing to push at the front, you can see how, how hastily they're moving up. We've got about two minutes to go. Indeed, two minutes until one to defeat. And back towards the, the back line here, we can see the push is finally going to start coming out. He can't go too early in this situation. If he comes out too early, it's going to immediately be responded to by Snooper. But now the battering ram looking to move through. I think he might be able to make his way through. A horseman going to be looking to come down the backside as well. I don't think Snooper knows. I do not think Snooper knows. And that horseman makes it through. He's got his siege torch out. We've got how many minutes do we have? Two minutes to go? One minute. Minute 30 seconds to go. Snooper could look to pull villagers in this scenario. Does he have villagers nearby? I don't think he's got villagers nearby. I don't think he's got villagers nearby. There's the potential that this goes down right now. At the same time being attacked up towards the north. He's held up towards the north. Over towards the west. He's being held with a little bit of a back door coming through. And all of a sudden, Snooper... Oh, Snooper's gonna be going down! He's got 600... 6,000 health on this bad boy, but look how quickly it burns. Look how quickly it goes down. A minute and eight seconds. There's no villagers here to pull. There's no keeps. There's nothing to defend from this position. And the... the the prayer hall of Ukba goes down. He's going to need more of the prayer to save it. And it manages to get saved. Oh my god, the day gets saved. David Kim, the true savior, the backdoor savior, comes in from behind and immediately looks to put keeps down in the, this position. You can see Snooper's attention now has has finally been turned towards the units that are in his base, but it's too little late. Too le oh my lord. Oh, oh, fellas. Fellas. <laughs> Oh my lord, and now a keep gonna be coming down. Are, th are they just looking to finish Snooper at this point? Do they realize that no Mattis is turning around? Mattis is turning around, but you can see Dinky King is gonna be coming in for the kill. Are they intent to just close out this whole this saga of Snooper completely? Is that what's happening? Is that what is happening? You can see that Snooper continues to move back towards his base, but now the knights are looking to come through. The landmarks could be what are, what are getting targeted in this scenario. You can see Path finally going to be helping out. It is four against one in this scenario. It is Path. It is Matthews. It is Dinky King. It is David Kim all working against Snooper and Snooper trying to hold on those hand cannons, turning their attention towards those uh, towards those uh, those knights. And the knights going to be trying to burn or siege down all of these units. And now back towards the uh, the this. The southern entrance of David Kim's base, or rather Snooper's base. David Kim continues. I can't believe he found it. Oh my lord! The the fact. How did he? How did he even get behind here? How did he get behind here? Don't. Oh no! Don't tell me he came in all that way. How, how did he get behind here? There's a giant wall. Did he get behind the wall? Don't tell me he got behind the wall. How did he get in? There must have been. Oh no! Don't tell me he got down there. Oh no. There's no possible... Did he come up through here? How did he get through? How did he get through? He, there must have been a way. Oh, man. We're going to go have to check the replay for that. I'm, I'm, I need to know. I need to know. But now Snooper really under pressure because Dinky King is going to be looking to take down all of this production here. We'll check in with, with uh, Snooper and see how many resources are in the bank. It's not looking pretty for Snooper right now. Less than 300 food in the bank. Everything has gone tits up at this point and Snooper is trying his best to keep his head above water but he got, he got I think that was a little bit too many units for Snooper to take and now he's built up this pretty nice mass of bombards but I can't help but feel like it's a little bit unnecessary at this point Snooper it does very effectively against the tower war elephants but just un unfortunately not very effectively against the uh, against the spears but let's check in on the minimap because now we've got Matt is moving in on his ally, at least ally with air quotes right there. Uh, it's going to be Path that goes down. Let's bring up that uh, let's bring up that large minimap and see what's going on. You can see a lot of attacks are happening right now. We'll ride on board with Matt is and see where his attacks are coming from. You can see in the center here, there's a little bit for Path, but Path also looking to build up down towards this south. He's looking to rebuild. He appreciates the fact that he might not be in a decent spot. But keep in mind, it's those landmarks, baby. It's all about those landmarks. He's only got that school of cavalry and that primary town center that remains. So in, in the blink of an eye, he could be taken out. There are still landmarks up towards this northern position, but he's obviously going to have to get through Dinky King in this scenario to even consider threatening it. So, I mean, I, I looked at that 
And I thought there is no possible way that you're able to break through that. There's so many things uh, to, to try and deal with in that scenario. But, but obviously, Snooper... I mean, the Siege of Snooper was was one of those things. It was it was kind of scary, but at the same time, it was kind of beautiful. The way that everybody managed to collapse on him, all coming in from different angles. And I, I'll be the first one to say it. I was scared for, for everybody else because there were there are so few crossings to actually get across in this scenario. So Snooper's very easily able to put all of his attention towards those three crossings and defend it. And now, riding on board with Matthews, we see he's got the land snakes out, the land connects, the the land sharks, as as some people who can't pronounce it prefer to say. But uh, definitely one of the strongest civs in this scenario, going up against the French. And we look at the remaining civilizations right now. We've got one French player. We've got another French player who doesn't really look like he's going to be in that good of a position. But you can see Snooper with his score sitting very, very high right now. He's playing the Abbasid Dynasty. And a lot of that's going to be because of the infrastructure that he's got. And now beginning to focus on getting all of his village account back up. Where was that back door coming through? Don't tell me... Oh my god, look at David Kim. David Kim now looking to push up. And we can see that the battering rams are going to have trouble up against the stone wall. But I think we might have ourselves another little back door on our hands. So if we were going to be scoring this at this point in time, um, you, you would definitely say it would be one point going over to Dinky King. He did a great job uh, in uh, in destroying the uh, the House of Wisdom. So 10 out of 10 to him. Um, and so that's one point to Dinky King at this point. One point over to Snooper uh, for him. Uh, that, that's how I'd be scoring it. And then, so that was Nevix. Uh, we also saw Wham go down. So Wham was, was taken out by his brother. Uh, so David Kim also with the score, but David Kim looking to take a little bit more points uh, in this scenario. At least this is how I would be scoring it. I would be scoring it, you know, based on where you finish, but also based on how many players you eliminate. And I guess the way that you would look at an elimination, the way that you would assess elimination is, you know, you, you might not, you might surrender. But what was the main reason you surrendered? If it was a single person, in this scenario here, we could see that, you know, obviously Sno Snooper made uh, the Muslim surrender despite only taking out, in fact, no, none of the landmarks. We saw all three landmarks still remaining here in this scenario. Uh, and so he would still get a point for that, okay? It's not about killing the landmarks. And I mean, it, don't get me wrong, it is about killing the landmarks as well if you can kill those landmarks. And I think it's it's important. It should award you a point in this scenario. But now you can see that Path is looking to build up. Now, the question is, Matt is. How exposed is Matt is in this scenario? We take a look at his base. And you can see it's quite the beautiful base, but there's just not a lot of walls for matches. There's a... <laughs> that is a bit of a siege army, though, isn't that? that? There's so many trebuchets. How many trebs are we talking right here, matches? You're talking 12 trebs, 11 bombards, and now he's actually beginning to work through David Kim. So he's turning his attention to somebody who was a former ally, and this is what you got to love about Free For All, because alliances do not last forever. If we take a look at his landmarks, he's got a Palace of Swabia, he's got his main town center, he's got the Regnitz Cathedral, and he's got the Arkham Chapel, all within one screen. He is so open right now. He is so potentially threatened in this scenario. But it, the question is whether anybody is going to be able to take him because I, I do genuinely think he's in prime position. Take a look at the resources he's got at the moment. Not a whole lot of income per minute with regard to the gold, but he's got so much that he can potentially put on spears, onto horsemen. And keep in mind, the horsemen, the spears, for this civilization are very strong. We see behind this, uh, he's still yet to go for the two... Oh my lord, he's not going men-at-arms at all. He's, he, he's literally not even making men-at-arms. I wonder what that is about. Is this the no men-at-arm challenge coming out from Matthews as he continues to push for- Oh, oh, I just realized. I just realized he just forced his enemy out. W was that a landmark snipe? I don't think that was a landmark snipe. I think, I think he just killed him, right? Or did I miss the landmarks? Drongo, wake up right now. You're too busy thinking about landmarks. I think that's a landmarks. Yeah, the guild hall. Because remember, the, 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 the first landmark was over here. Oh my god, Drago, wake, wake the hell up. Second landmark is here. Third landmark was here. Fourth landmark was there. It was a landmark snipe. He literally just took out the landmarks. Where was David Kim's army? We take a look at David Kim. He sits at zero out of zero. I mean, it doesn't really tell you too much. But David Kim actually getting taken out there. Apologies, fellas, for uh, for not picking that one up. I, I, I was just sitting here talking about, you know, the, the fact that no one's really looking to expose him. But now, I mean, he could be turning his attention to Pap. And I, I think Pap is a little bit scared at this point. Pap sitting on 148. Pap never really being able to get ahead in this game. I really feel terrible for path but at the same time i mean he's got 40 knights 40 royal knights by the way uh he, he's got a fair decent amount of army if he wanted to he could come in and look to snipe these buildings and there's really not much that could be done against this i mean obviously matthews would be able to pull villages and look to repair it up he's got plenty of wood as well he's got 25,000 wood so that is healing for a long time and now could be looking at court architects so maybe realizes that there is a potential threat that he could be sniped and now we can see matt is just going to be turning his attention towards pap you can see the way he's coming in now there's a lot of siege in this scenario uh matt is sitting on 145 population how is dinky king doing that is the real question
question because Snooper manages to survive. Ma Snooper manages to keep his head above water and Dinky was working on these forces but we can see he's been repelled completely and now at the moment sits on 92 military population and the question is do we dare see a landmark or rather a wonder out of any of these players is anyone really in a position to to go for it and i don't i feel like it's probably not the case i think if there's anybody it's matt is but i don't think he's got the stone i don't think he's got the gold i don't think he's got the desire either but if there's anybody who can actually steamroll this game i'm starting to think it might be matt is because he's, he's in such a great central position by the same token, I mean, the, the main issue that you're going to have is Snooper is back down here. And what is Snooper's economy looking like at the moment? It's 20 villages. Okay, okay, 20 villages and 19 traders coming out. Do not sleep on Snooper. Do not sleep on Snooper. And up towards the north, we continue to see those forces beginning to build up. Once again, for Dinky King, he is intent on taking down Snooper, but just didn't have the cooperation of Matiz, didn't have the cooperation of David Kim. And oh, this is where David Kim's army was. David Kim never got to work. Oh, David Kim never got to do the second back door. He's famous for his first back door, but the second one, unfortunately, going to be closed out. Oh, how sad. So obviously, David was focusing on that, didn't even realize that that uh, there was the potential threat that Matiz could be looking for a snipe, and that's exactly what he did. So very unfortunate you know honestly i feel like it wouldn't be like it wouldn't be terrible in david kim's position to have actually gone get, gotten a transport ship and just look to send it oh god i was gonna say look to send it up the river but like good luck getting through these and you just just with a couple of villages and look to repair up your chamber of commerce but now we can see like it's so hard there's a battle that's literally unfolding right next to your chamber of commerce i don't think it would have been viable i don't think it would have been possible but now we can see matt is slowly but steadily looking to try and hold on against this position we can see a lot of royal knights beginning to come in lance connect's going to be coming and doing a, a fair bit of damage in this scenario keep in mind the bombard's looking pretty decent in this cleanup position managing to keep themselves alive and now all the traps going to be looking to turn their attention he says you want to come for me that's fine i'm going to take you down boy i'm going to take you down like a clown and indeed he does did he just see your farm i'm not sure exactly what happened there you can you can see the way that he's doing the damage though it's just absolutely massive matt is looking to try and take control of this game school of cavalry going to be up on the menu town center up on the menu as well the play is very intent on taking out pap at this point pap has kept his head above water up until this point keep in mind there are two landmarks up towards the north that have been taken out for pap and then unfortunately these are his last two remaining landmarks first one going to get focused down matt is going to be taking it out and i don't think there's any way that Pap is going to be able to hold on from this position. We'll take a look from Matiz's perspective and see what kind of threat he's got, but it really doesn't seem like too much. And now Matiz looks to focus down that second landmark, and indeed, it is going to be Pap who gets tapped out. It is going to be our fourth player, and now only three remain. Player number one, Dinky King. He's up here towards the north. Player number two, towards the west of the map, is going to be Matthias. And player number three, towards the south, it is, of course, Snooper, the man who was sieged or besieged by almost everybody that spawned into this game. Unsuccessful in the fact that he was not able to, to come through with it. Not able to come through with the goods, but now Matthias looks to try and turn his attention uh, over, towards, over towards Dinky King. And th this is quite a force, and remember, Dinky King is fighting very heavily with Snooper in this scenario and you can see that you can see the fact that the, there is so much army over here and so now matt is, is in a great spot what kind of landmarks do we have here for dinky king dinky king still yet to make his way back across and repair up this landmark so if we were to do a landmark count right now four for matt is matt is all of his landmarks are nice and safe one two three four all within this all within space here he actually did lose there was a, a snipe attempt rather on his regnitz cathedral you can see the relic was sitting outside uh outside the the uh the regnitz which means that it was taken down uh, but obviously we can see Villager rebuilding it now. Regnitz yet to receive that relic back just yet. Uh, but he is going to be able to turn... Is he going for Snooper first? I think he realizes. I think he knows Snooper is the bigger threat in this scenario. Obviously Dinky King is closer to him. But the real threat in this situation is Snooper. And I got to agree with that. I think that's a very uh, appropriate assessment. And now he looks to begin making his way across the map. The question is whether he brings villagers. I think whenever you're doing these kind of pushes, you got to bring villagers because they have got to set up your forward base. So we can see that there was a forward base that was once set up in this position now. And one of the other things you could look to do is almost wall -a -lol this army. Maybe bring, bring along a relic and wall -a -lol the, the dead army that was once there before. We hear that relic being picked up now. Going to be chucked back into the Ragnits when it gets the chance. Villagers working back on it. So three out of four at the moment for him. Uh, last landmark, we've got a House of Learning over here uh, for Dinky King. Where is that fourth landmark, though? It should be the uh, the Palace of the Sultan or Palace the Hissar Palace. I'm not sure, actually. I'm looking for it. I'm looking for it. Where are you hiding it, Dinky? Where are you hiding it, Dinky? I know you're hiding it somewhere. I know you're hiding it somewhere. Am I blind? Am I legally blind? Okay, hold on. I see one over here. 
There it is. There it is. Palace of the Sultan. All right. I did find it. We did find it. So he's got the House of Learning and the Palace of the Sultan that's right there. And now all the attention going to be coming over and indeed he is going for Snooper. And uh, Snooper's got quite a lot of infrastructure here. But at the same time, I mean, it looks like it's a pretty... Wait. Oh, it's right there. Oh, God. Oh, my Lord. He could kill Snooper so easily. I was really scared. I was like, oh, there's, a, there's quite a distance to cover. I think he knows exactly where the landmarks are for Snooper. Actually, he doesn't. He doesn't know where the landmarks are for Snooper. You can see from his perspective right there, he, he's still not 100% sure where they are. But he'll continue to come in, and now that forward base is going to be coming down as well. He's going to be looking to rally in units for this position. At the same time, up towards the north, we can see more markets have been dropped down for Snooper. Where is Snooper's army, though? we got we got to go into Snooper's perspective. Let's ride on board with Snooper for a little bit. You can see he's under attack on most... Oh, my lord, we missed a huge battle that was unfolding over here. I do apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but you can see the amount of dead camels on the ground. There has just been action non-stop throughout this, and as a result, all of the Bombard's going to be looking to take it out, and now more camels going to be coming in. Elite Lance is getting in on the action. Snooper going to be going for precision crossbreeding as well. Going to be looking to completely uh, work on that farming economy. He's up to 120 villages all of a sudden, but now... He, he suffers a second potential player looking to try and take him out. I think Snooper knows he might be in trouble here with Matias looking to begin aggressing upon him. Bombard's on the back line looking to fire it off and Dinky King going to be holding on in this position but keep in mind all of Dinky's units are over here. But by the same token, with Dinky King's units over in this position, how much resources or how many resources does he have? Does he just look to go for a bit of a delete in this scenario? Dinky King not with a lot of resources. He's on 94 villages at this point in time. And you can see a lot of these villagers sitting back here on farms. Never yet didn't build the mill. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, don't you hate to see it? Look how far they have to travel all the way back to this mill. So he's got villagers on food, but they're just not doing anything. It's such a feels bad man moment. And now the Bombard's continuing to move in, trying to look to take down these outposts. Snooper knows he's in trouble at this point in time. We'll check in with Snooper. We'll see how he's doing. He's sitting on 119 population. He's looking to try and get more units out, but struggling. You can see he's actually got no more units in production, despite having all the production up here. I think he knows it's the curtains closing upon him as we enter back into Matiza's position. And we can see that uh, now those Bombards are going to begin firing off. The Trebs are going to be looking to do the damage. What is the range on those outposts with those Bombards? It is 10 tiles. So ideally, you just probably look to avoid engaging them with the bombards of yourself uh, just because they do have that extra well the, the trebs have got the extra range over the top of them and now the trebs gonna be firing off down towards it forward base coming through for matt Tears. he is looking to try and end this game at the same time forward base coming in for dinky king i think both players realize that the threat is the guy with the largest score and indeed that almost leaves matt Tears as a bit of an underdog in this position because he can he can get cooperation out of dinky king he can say hey let's focus on the guy with the highest score and all of a sudden behind this you know does he look to potentially drop down a wonder himself he's got plenty of space to do it if he wanted to look at the clearing that he's been doing look at all the blacksmith he's got back here he could just put a wonder over in this corner honestly if he wanted to and just stonewall it up i don't think there's any way that dinky king could get across there in time but now attention going to be turning towards him as the battle begins this looks like the siege of snooper 2.0 beginning to unfold now is snooper going to be able to hold on i don't think it is the case there's so many spears coming out and you can see these spears these are insane spears coming out from the holy roman empire they've got extra movement speed 1.38 movement speed and super surrenders there you go so i would almost say that's got to be half a point to both of these players in this scenario because you can see dinky king is pushing over towards his opponent uh from the north and at the same time matt is going to be pushing towards this position and now the question is where does the attention turn as the keep goes up in the middle of the map do we have a potential sacred site victory coming in or maybe just a denying of the sacred sites that's coming in as he looks to keep up with the Kardashians in the center here. And now attention is going to be turned between the two final remaining players, Matiz and Dinky King. Dinky King was a player I honestly thought was going to be knocked out so early in this game. He was stuck between Nevix up towards the north. He had immediately underneath him Matiz. He also had Pap that was down towards his south position. He had David Kim. Everybody was over on his island. He also had Wham, of course. There were only two players that weren't on his island. And not to mention he was between two players that were incredibly aggressive throughout this game. But somehow, some way, he manages to evacuate the main island and finds a way to survive.
But the question is whether he's going to be able to survive for much longer because when it comes to the economy right now, Matt is getting very close to that food limit. You can see he's sitting on 90,000 food at this point in time. Keep in mind, you cannot go above 100,000 food. That is the maximum amount of food that you can have. And as a result, it means he can then begin to turn his attention towards military population. Whether that means we see more spears from him, whether that means we begin to see more land snakes from him or land sharks or land connects from him, that remains to be seen. But look at the forces still. Dinky yet to replace everything. We'll take a look at the production from dinky dinky with 110 production buildings right now that is an awful lot of production coming out for dinky he's got production over towards this island he's got production all the way back here they are just absolutely everywhere he's got so damn many of them and now makes his way back towards that front you can see he's going for a very heat very heavy siege composition but keep in mind this is uh, this is post patch ladies and gentlemen the mangonels have been nerfed they are not as strong as they used to be so the question is is it even going to matter and now we can see dicky king looking to try and solidify this position up towards the uh, the entrance he's going to be dropping down outposts you would probably be wondering why are there no uh, why are there no stone uh, outposts that are up on this front line what are they called they're called stone towers Players have accepted that they are way too strong, and as a result, they just ban them. Why are they too strong, you might be wondering? Well, they get boiling oil. You see how keeps have got boiling oil? Well, those unit, those also get it. And yeah, they can be taken down with bombards, but they're very effective at uh, just staying alive. And so players just do not build them, and uh, as a result, it means that you don't see any of them out. But now the force is moving out over for Dinky King. You can see he's got a lot of units beginning to be trained at this point in time. But I'm starting to get scared for him because as as uh, Matt is, begins to move over towards this position, you can see that he's going to be dropping down more and more infrastructure. And indeed, that is exactly what we can see as more stables coming in. And look, you can see he didn't even tech into knights. He's just gone straight into horsemen. There is nothing here other than those horsemen. Uh, he's looking for that trash combo. And look at, the, look at the amount of resources he's got behind this. So many resources are now beginning to open up a little bit of somehow how is he firing from behind the walls i think he manages to to get through a hole here i think i don't think that's actually a, a, a wall you can see right there so they're able to fire right around the corners indeed look at the bombards the bombards gonna be firing oh never, never mind they do fire through maybe it was the trebs that took it out i'm not sure i i, I thought i saw bombards fire through that wall but now matt is gonna be looking to aggress on his opponent i think dinky king a little bit concerned at this point in time a single remaining wall look at that wall as well a very curious wall and now the siege of snooper Two of the final combatants that took part in the Siege of Snooper are going to be looking to turn the attention towards each other as the final victor will shortly be announced because these two players are incredibly talented to have made it here. Matt is... I, I got I to just give Matt is a 10 out of 10. The fact that he played it so passively, he never really made enemies. We saw up towards the north, people were fighting with each other. Down towards the south, people were fighting for, uh, with each other. There was Pap, who got caught in a, between a rock and a hard place, or rather I should say a river and a hard place. But now the battle begins to unfold in the middle of the map. You can see the, all of the infantry beginning to run in, heading towards those bombards, trying to do it. Matt is going to be looking to reinforce. We can see the whole hand cannon here, Matt, that he's building behind this. Elite horsemen, elite spears, elite land snakes coming in as well. Everybody looking to do damage, and now Matt is unfolding upon the bombards of Dinky King. He's, he manages to hold on in this scenario. You can see the hand cannon here is for the Delhi player looking to run out, and very, very cool. They're so fast, so quick, so pretty, beginning to snipe down those units one by one. First bombard, second bombard, third bombard. All of the bombards going to be going down at least. Not today. Not today, not today, Drongo. Don't get carried away. Do not get ahead of yourself. And now you can see the units that are coming out from Matt is behind this. What kind of units have we got coming out from Dinky King? Dinky King is sitting at mass population. He's got elite spearmen that are coming out. 44 of them. He's got 29 hand cannon here, so looks to hold on. But now Matt is beginning to drop down those outposts as well. We can see them getting those cannon emplacements. In this scenario, there are bombards back here. Looking to try and defend off, and indeed, indeed defend off they will do. As now all the units begin making their way towards the front line. Trebuchet's firing off towards them as well. You can see the Trebs just doing plenty of damage in this scenario. And up, up towards the north, we hear bombards firing off. Continuing to focus down each other, and it looks like Dinky King might be able to break out in this scenario. Bombard's doing a great job of focusing down the bombards of his enemy, and reinforcements now coming in. It looks like Dinky going to be able to overwhelm at least this forward base for the moment. Uh, but the question now is, where are those reinforcements going to be coming through from Matis? We'll take a look from his perspective. You can see he's got a lot in the queue right now with, with regard to his reinforcements. Does he look for a potential water play? It doesn't look like it. There are islands up here. Uh, still, we don't see this town center being taken by Dinky King in this scenario. And, oh my lord. Okay. 
Okay, I see what happened here. Okay, essentially what happened is he walled in. He, he forgot to drop a gate. So he's going to be dropping that gate any second now. Villager coming forward. You can see all the reinforcements still yet to make their way through. All of the units going to get taken out. The trebuchets. These guys are so expensive. All going to be going down. This is the long distance siege that is just going down to the hand cannoneers. And such, they're, they're fully upgraded hand cannoneers at this point in time. I don't think you can get any more upgrades on these boys as the Delhi. Uh, but now we finally see that wall coming up. Village account for Matt is still sitting at 73 at this point in time. He's got 73 villagers despite having almost maximum amount of food, having a huge amount of wood in the bank as well. He is looking A-OK -okay in this position. But now we see the Dinky's doing a pretty decent job of cleaning up all this infrastructure at the front. Manganel's firing off. Bombard's doing a decent job. Hand Cannon is coming up as well. We'll ride on board with Dinky. We'll check in with how he's doing. His resource is beginning to run a little bit low. You can see he's got an elephant in queue. That Tower War elephant going to be coming out from that, uh, what is it, the Palace of... The Sultan? Palace of the Sultan. He nails it. Good job, Jongo. Uh, but uh, now the reinforcements finally making their way through. We see horsemen. We see spearmen. We see lanchenecks. And uh, they are concerning because they're going to find their way down towards this position. You can see Matt is the way he postures. He's he's yet to go in at this point in time, but he's just waiting for the for the siege to come in. He's got eight bombards looking to reinforce on this frontal position. We'll have a look with Dinky and uh, or rather Matt is and see how much production he's got. 62 production at this point. Everything funneled in uh, towards this angle. And now we can hear them firing off towards that tower elephant. Going to be going down very quickly against that bombard. And indeed it is. And now the Bombard's looking to focus down on these units. We can see the Horsemen looking to pick up reinforcements. A very smart move. And now all those reinforcements for Matty is going to be coming down as well. This, is, this could potentially be the final battle in this situation. Bombard's also coming out now. Bombard's looking to do plenty of damage on the back line. Indeed, great micro coming through from Dinky King. He's able to focus down, or rather from Matt is. Matt is focusing down all the Bombard's on the back line. We don't see any Culverin coming out yet at this point for Dinky King or for Matt is. I, I don't know whether, can, whether they can make it. I'm pretty confident they can. Yeah, you can, you can make Culverin as the Holy Roman Empire. Can you make Culverin as the Delhi? I don't think you can. I'm going to go with no. No, you cannot. So Delhi cannot make Culverin. It is only the Holy Roman Empire that can, but he doesn't even feel the need to. He's just got overwhelming numbers and indeed looks to overwhelm on this front, taking out Dinky King. Dinky King now going to be struggling. Keep in mind, he doesn't have a lot of resources in the bank behind this. He's sitting at the moment on 200 population. He's got units that are in queue, but look at the resources he's got in the bank. A lot of this right now, it's military population. And now that siege coming in, he's rebuilt that wall in the center of the map. We'll ride on board with Matt here as he looks to go in for a killing blow right now. Dinky King going to be struggling. This is the final final two players of this game. The question is, who's going to take it? And I can't help but feel it might be Matthews. From the beginning of this game, it looked struggling for him. It looked concerning for him. He was caught between many of the more aggressive players, but still, he somehow manages to find a way. Whether that be through diplomacy, through baiting, he's done a great job and now looks to try and take out his opponent. You know, the fact I, I can't help but think it was the fact that he left Snooper alive. Remember earlier in the game, he left Dinky King to, to just fight against Snooper. And now, all of a sudden, Matthews is the one with the resources in the bank. He's the one that's looking to push on Dinky King, and Dinky King is struggling to keep his head above water in this scenario. All the spears are going to begin moving forward with their little kilts on right now, trying to take down the Bombards. The Bombards continue to move forward. The, the Hand Cannon is doing a great job of picking them off. Still, we don't see plus one armor, plus three armor coming through for our, uh, our Holy Roman Empire player. Uh, but continuing now to, uh, to move forward, more spears coming in. We hear those reinforcements as the forward base looking to get rebuilt. I hear some words being exchanged between these players in the chat right now. You can hear it, but you can't see it. You can hear it, but you cannot see it. And the question is, which player will come out on top? Because I'm starting to think it might be Matiz. We'll take a look and see how Dinky King is draining. And indeed, he is draining. He's got units in the queue at this point in time. It's starting to look concerning. Matiz on the other side. He's just got money for days. He's done a great job since the beginning of this game. And he continues to do well. It all comes down to that Arkan Chapel. That Arkan Chapel just providing such a great food economy. And now we can see Bombards somehow finding a way around from the north side. I'm not sure exactly why they're coming down from that angle. They managed to get picked up more. Bombard's being rallied in. You can hear the units behind this. And good game gets called. Matt is victorious, taking the free-for-all game. Fellas, if you've enjoyed this game, make sure you leave a like on the video because I tell you what, it was an absolute pleasure casting it for you. If you're looking forward to more free-for-alls, let me know. Leave it down in the comments and I'll catch you guys in the next one.